well, unless some people argue the national rural employment guarantee scheme yeah, that is, is, yeah. is a, has an element of migration prevention. No, but there is only one statement. They said that it is one to reduce the distress migration. Yeah. I think we should uh, <laughs> Unfortunately, we're going to have to end here. Yes. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Rashan, the panelist. <laughs> thank you, Jenna, for organizing this. Um, and Omar for moderating. Thank you. We are just going to segue right into the, the closing ceremony um, because we're running a bit over time, so we're skipping the 15 minute break. And we want to all enjoy the weather and go home for the long weekend and we've been here for three days and everybody's tired and but inspired right um, so we're nearing the end I'd like to use this um, occasion again to thank the conference team please give a big hand to the conference team it's they've been making all this happen and the volunteers the volunteers have been fantastic also, the organizing committee, um, many of the members you've seen as, as session chairs um, throughout the, the conference, and also to all presenters, because we wouldn't have a good conference without any presenters. I think throughout the conference, we've been very successful in exchanging information about our research. Um, in learning from each other, but also networking with each other. And I think the networking aspect is, of course, all very, also very important. And it's in particularly important because we are having a conference about precarious futures, and we need to have the resources um, to tackle these precarious futures. Um, what are going to be our ne next steps? I'm just going to use this um, to advertise um, about a project that we're going to start in the fall here at RCIS. And we're, be we're beginning a new project on, it's going to be titled uh, Integration Trajectories of Immigrant Families. And what we're going to try to do is first build on an existing network that we have already established over the two years and expand that, um, not only locally, but also nationally and eventually also internationally. And the way that we want to bring different interests, research interests and, and professional interests, interests within the community, the way we want to bring them together is through um, centering the family as a unit of analysis, and then within the context of the family, um, address um, the intersectiona intersectionality of issues like um, the policy context, children and youth, labor, because in, in, in the family we also have breadwinners, um, but also gender issues, um, the role of the community and so forth. So within this umbrella of the, of the family, we can bring in a lot of different research agendas and a lot of institutions that are interested in, in, in a variety of issues related to immigration and settlement. Um, interestingly, of course, this focus on the family contrasts contrast with uh, recent moves by the federal government, which seems to be decentering the family. Um, so I'm going to end here. You see, um, we're going to continue on. I hope we can all stay in touch um, because really we're just getting started here. Um, I'm now going to pass it on to Ed Sackany. Ed has um, opened this conference, and now it's time for him to close this conference. Um, and please join me in wel welcoming Ed again um, to close this. At least that uh, clapping still has a little enthusiasm in it. First of all, uh, all of you have to be commended for still being here and soldiering on with this conference. And uh, the fact is that um, dialogue is something that the human race is forgetting big time, I, it seems like. Um, I'm going to tell you, as the original person of this country, I was involved with Placer Dome, which is one of the gold producers of the world, when they came into our territory up north. And um, I, I was sort of the uh, trailblazer of making sure that uh, their hiring included my nation. And uh, I was one of the advocates, a staunch uh, supporter of going for quality rather than quantity. I didn't want a revolving door, even though politically, from my 
own people, the chiefs, since they were coming in the territory, they felt that maybe 30% should be Aboriginal employee. Of course, I, I said, no, it just doesn't work. I said, what we need to do is go after the best people we can come up with so we have credibility established within the corporation. And of course, the mine had their perceptions and perspectives, and I was caught in the middle. And yet I was able to put a good balancing act together. And, and I can say to you, as I stand before you, that was in the 80s, and now that resource development is still going northward. A lot has changed and with respect to employment, business relationships, business uh, potential business uh, spin-offs, that sort of thing. And it just started with one Native employment program who said that it's not impossible because it's practical that we go that way. I had guidance from my elders, Mingwesh Natal, Anikishayuk, Kishayuk, Kawichit, Kabatizianante. I thank those elders for letting me work with those corporations, Ogamaganesta, Nichininot, and also to work with my people. I didn't, uh, I just wanted to let you know that I did not apply for that position they were looking for. It was about this time, when I think back so many years ago, that the Aboriginal people had put a working agreement together with Placer Dome, but they needed a body to sort of make sure that agreement went somewhere. And it's now almost 10, uh, 12 after 4, and they had a meeting at 4.30 to present that person to the corporation and didn't have anybody. I worked with them and helping that agreement and I was just packing my stuff and ready to go home and call it a day and and said that we did we did a darn good job of this project and we're having a working agreement as a result. As I was packing up, one of the elders came to see me and said, you know, Ed, we have approached so many people. And I just had college uh, education at that time. They went after the university people, but everybody was too apprehensive. I might as well say they were scared. So they asked if I would consider it. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I made that decision uh, at that 11 hour, 59 minute and 59 second to say yes. And I haven't regretted that since. It was those teachings of the elders and my granny and my grandpa who made that happen. To the point today where I'm still doing it by being here at this wonderful university. And diversity is something we have to work on and do something about not just talk about it. You folks have absorbed a lot of information, I'm sure, and you probably, some of you feel good. Come after the long weekend, reality will hit because you're back where you came from. And hopefully you will take some of the knowledge that you gain here and be able to put it in practice but there's so many tangents attached to it that you have to work with. And sometimes those tangents could be of a hindrance rather than helpful, especially when it's come to uh, government policy. They seem to be a little slow, uh, even though they try to project a different scenario. The private sector sometimes can move a lot quicker. And this is why dialogue is very important. And I'm sure you've seen some of that. In this world today where there seems to be so much hatred, negativity, and nationalities being pitted against each other, race relations sometimes questioned. And sometimes race relations branded without any thought given. 
but a flashpoint. Since I socialize to hurt a group, education is the best weapon to have, holistic education. You talked about the environment. I will close by saying that as Aboriginal people, you cannot separate the land from our spirituality. It's impossible. So this is why when you pick up the media paper sometimes, you'll see that Aboriginal people are always talking about the land. And we, are, we, we tell the human race that we have to be caretakers of it. Because if we don't, we're only hurting ourselves. In a city like this, we're so sh sheltered that we don't realize what's happening out there. People tend to forget where hydro comes from or the air quality that, and so on and so on, the water. If we don't look after those, we'll destroy ourselves. I want to tell you that we're interconnected with our Mother Earth. A simple analogy would be what the trees breathe out, we breathe in. What we breathe out, the trees breathe in. So we need each other. Take one entity away, such as the trees, then we're destroying ourselves. And what are we going to leave our children and their children? So this is why I'm glad I'm able to close this because by all of you staying here for the three days and absorbing all this information, certainly sends out this beacon of hope that we need to change in a better direction. Mingwesh Nitton, Kapechi Emeya Nagusko, Umaga Nesta Kinawa, Kapechi Skonamochik, Nutano, Nagachika Gogo, Miss Webogo, Katacha Goma Okawio Teski, Koyas Pugoga Matzoak, Koyas Pugoga Motel. I'm honored that I'm able to speak at the end and that you folks took the time to listen. I ask my great creator to look after all of you, whatever nations you've come from, that you live a good life and that you keep walking in a good way. Miigwech Nathan, miigwech, miigwech, miigwech. Thank you folks. I just add one more thing, if I could. When, when Harold, did, I'm I'm Francis Hare. I'm director of the Immigration and Settlement Masters Program. Harold did a very nice thank you to virtually everyone else. And as a faculty representative on the conference committee, and with Charity as a student representative on the conference committee, we would like to sincerely thank Harold for everything he has done in pulling this together. Yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Have a good trip home.